<laughs> it literally stops in the middle of the vocalist going, hello. I guess not the middle, right at the start. But yeah. I overuse that song. Or I love that song. But now it's time to start a game. And that is... Cooperative in now. I mean, it's cooperating now. Yeah. Woo! Disco time! It's been a while. It's literally been a week. Well, five days. But, damn, I want to play this game. Authority. All right, there's the smoker. Uh, I gotta wash myself off later. That's the water lock. But so basically, I just have to I have to find the smoker and go to the union. But there's something I forgot to examine that's the first time I was here and that's here you see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room a strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains excuse me officer the back room is strictly for employees only jobkeeper what's behind the curtains nothing why aren't you browsing the books she fiddles with her pendant don't you feel compelled to look at the books you ought to. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Aside from poking at it, Suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Hold a moment. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits. I'm not a customer. I'm an officer of the law. Pran has closed down her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Parapsychologically speaking. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid. This is different. Police officer, I need to get in there. I sense this place calling for me. I must never escape beyond the threshold. No, it's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now, Almost please begging step you. Step away from the curtains. I'm a police officer. I need to Why? get in there. It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I but can't I... allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. But I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the you threshold. Do? My God. Even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Step away, dear sir. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open no. them. She raises Please her hand to try and stop me, you. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Lies. Rip them open, we say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you as if taunting you. I will talk to her about it. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to Crime. Yeah, I already yeah. told you, it's just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She's so tense, <laughs> it's a miracle she hasn't snapped in half yet. It's like it's cursed, oh. right? Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed. Just like everyone said. 
They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Host of hosts, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does this curse the manifest curse itself? It's so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease, eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains yeah. again. Didn't that curtain just move? Wait, that's it? I was hoping for something more paranatural. But officer, there's nothing natural about entire companies declaring bankruptcy. I'm talking about cafe demons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. <laughs> there's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. Strange. I feel unwanted too. What does it mean? So? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. <laughs> it may be dangerous. She, her eyes narrow. She tries to get a read on your energy. It's not good to talk about the curse. Not in detail. The negativism. She shivers. Dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow. Void wraiths. You have new words. Such wraiths may prove a formidable enemy. <laughs> Fight them! Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the stray, strange cage like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, Pointing at us. No. It's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans, with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales. 15%! Would you like me to take case? I can investigate, see if Most the curse is real. Not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. Psychic arts? Sounds right down our alley. Case smart ass parenting advice helping that you're master of the psychic curse. Slip yes. her, you silver tongued fiend. Show her what world class perfidy looks like. Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. Pair detected from a long line of pair detectives. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... She's not wrong. Hey now, hey, hey, hey. You need the booze to focus, all right? I the haven't ingested any pain. alcohol. He silently picks since out my binge. Book. Go ahead then, rock her world. He thinks. I'll compose some notes. <laughs> the spirits are to contact the void. You see, it's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. How do you know all this? Here we go. I am the Void Revenant! I have the powers to de-bad all the bad energies! I should have realized. A pattern lies within the fabric. The hand of fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Perhaps you truly are the one to deliver this woman from the doom. But, I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. Yes. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? A hand on your heart. On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. 
Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity, for I have sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney? The passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes. That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. Farewell for now, book peddler. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking... Pull them open! Pull them open. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture Should have changed it from closed curtains to open curtains. In the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage-like trinkets. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Just rest the look away her own face buried in her hands. Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. The same person would never put their head into such a machine. Vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. <laughs> Physique. Do I have any shivers booster? You're like, shivers is gonna be somewhat important. Not important, but. No, I don't. I feel like. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. I've broken into Kuno's parents' apartment, broken into the communal department. Because I've broken into apartments I'm good at it now, I have a key left. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. You feel the tiny hairs on the back of your neck rise up, as if someone's standing right behind you. An uneasy knot forms in the pit of your stomach. Touch the back of your neck. What is this feeling? Outside, the wind howls in from across the bay. The building at Rue de Son Ghislaine stands like a matchbox on its side, with men inside, like little wooden sticks, ready to catch a fire. A panicking woman squeezes the pendant around her neck until it leaves a mark inside her palm. A man, a few meters away, stands frozen with a key in his hand. Somewhere inside, a spider is spinning its web. Open the door and enter. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Shuffle. Oh, I got another... Uh, uh, I can replace the bull. This is... Sitius, Fortis, the rest is worn off. It smells like leather and sweat. Worn out wall bars, they look unsafe. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? This is familiar because I'm a no, weightlifter. It's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit, 
Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall out. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Physical instrument. Okay. That's my only one, right? Ooh, Kim has a speech ball. What is this place? Lieutenant stares at the dusty equipment. It's an adventure. No, it's a gym. He disagrees. So it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An airy feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here in ages? Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? You're not wrong. But the barbell that's boring on the floor. I can do it for its master. I couldn't do it. Oh well. You managed to hoist it off the ground. But the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. I'm wearing gloves. Like you're no beast. Just an old man with bad form. See? See? This place is cursed. Even your body has failed you. It's a miracle you didn't injure yourself. <laughs> Seems like I'm a little out of shape. Or maybe these gloves just suck. Proper weightlifting gloves would definitely afford a better grip. Lieutenant agrees. I have a lot of health and a lot of health healing items, so oh right. Always blocked by old window panes and debris. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Alright, creepy mannequins. A naked mannequin torso. Strange yellow color. Damn, three old bucks. Blue velvet. Soft to the touch. Moth bitten. Skis with slipstream painted on the laminated top layer. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Production schedule filament memory. Uh, Customized filaments. Filaments tape. Production schedule note. Filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Ooh. Where are the clothes it used to display? So true. Where are the clothes it used to display? Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes. It's an of elf some warrior. Ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy eared creatures appear to be different types. Of welkins, you make out autumnal candle welkins casting 
wax-based magic. Translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin. And even Ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin, this is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. Uh -huh. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tuorg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only I with Welkin. took a different turn Green than I was Welkin, expecting. <laughs> Red Welkin, and the High Welkin, to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm hmm Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Lieutenant nods the Welkin's facial hair. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Why would anyone spend so much time on Some this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. I see. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. Back to photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements Ooh, on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. And can I catch the swords? The dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dwarg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, <laughs> a much needed respite from our own world. Like eggnog or morphine. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Interesting. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Keep reading. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Damn. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Mm. Inspect the, the notes. writing is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out. We're all untethered and heat death of the universe. The full text reads, heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, the biggest advancement in role playing systems since the thirties. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Funny looking at my shoes light up as I hover over it. It lights both of them up even though only one of them is actually being lit up. If I go here, it's normal, right? If I go here, it's like, whoop, lit up. <laughs> I am, uh, I was lit. What was lit? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. 
piece of paper still hangs from the printer. Ooh. A radio computer. Just this sitting lieutenant. here without anyone inside. Watching you sucker on the machine. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. This is the Ream Civic radio computer. Model RC5120. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible printer. Turn on the machine. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Insert the production like schedule. A drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? Oh no. It was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien CO-like technology. The static Boomer. gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident en rue de Saint-Gedelaine. This is East Inflindian Rapid Station 1. Fortress accident. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me no. a hint? Is it my birthday? Still no. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Oh. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? The voice in the machine asks again. She sounds cold in the damp air. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Why do you call me Fortress accident? Fortress accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress accident SCR produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. I see. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. And what's this interactive call in radio game? Any other questions? <laughs> Why are you, what are you, a machine or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Damn. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Inflindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely doing this job? Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. I see. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for this accident. Well, that's all for now. Thank you, and goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the Tires static. on the cube are still smoldering. 
casting the framework in a soft glow. The filament slides out. Nothing happens. Like a smooth draw. Nothing happens. The filament slides out. Okay. Gotta look for a password. Whoever's most fans RPG in the universe. Woo! This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh is a fireplace. Over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. A diagram for summoning some time forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pedantic. Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. You can clearly tell that I have ADHD. If this game let me jump, I would be jumping. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. You're dealing with something medical here. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master. Oh, Fancy. right, because it's a call in station. Says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Looks like a surveillance program. They must have had massive airwaves. These things don't come cheap. Who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. It's a game that he's decides playing. to call in to a call in station. It looks like a list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Il Mara. All of this is gone, left unrealized. My God. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. The lieutenant leans closer, his finger tracking the maddening rhizome. Lost of air with the loan must have been exactly. huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Squint at the lines. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Okay, what do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. Lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness. He thinks, as a compliment. How are they planning to Two do that? Call in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the game master frequency that listens in on the smaller call in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Gard, Messina, Königstein. You know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game. Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Where's Most the chalkboard? I love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the We Were a Board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. <laughs> this game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The lieutenant took the set thinking. It was just a play achievement, and as it was Chris Godlam, I could see another explanation. 
Have any money? Let's give them more money so they can finish it and make it even better. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it in company. Let's finish it. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. They looks around the derelict room. The pipes howl and the rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. Oh. Magnesium. It's a you fridge. See a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost, and the bear's eyes are glowing red. They are, in fact, glowing red. This ice bear is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. What is this thing? Looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Open the door, baby! A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Look inside the refrigerator. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name. Revachon Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. <laughs> you examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. Oh, I the see. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. There's a giant bear shaped fridge doing an abandoned cellar in the first place. Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. Lieutenant reaches for the one of the wrappers. He says it in the light. They tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. <laughs> the lieutenant points to the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Close the door. Inner note, sides, marks from fruit shaped kitchen magnets. The Interact. note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? Lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best. But the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide oh. it somewhere safe. Who now? You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home. ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself. If I lived in a civilized place with a freezer, take care, Sully Swaff. You find the film memory with the offsite coffee and the frozen ice cream maker. Where's that now? Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. That's a film memory. It inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. It's like the production schedule you found. Only this one's an off-site copy. The illiterate ginger kid. Really? You don't have a single guess? You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Put the note away. Like right here? Or over there? Ice cream maker, defrosted and unplugged. Flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A 
few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Looks like there's a there's a hidden there's a hole in the wall. There is, line. yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Yes. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Spec the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock in better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. His eyes are gleaming. Could the murder weapon look very really similar? It's the same type of weapon, yes. A breech loader. An interesting coincidence that we should find something so similar. But I'm afraid our search for the real murder weapon must continue. What does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. It might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Antique Bell McGrave rifle. Interdasting, interdasting. Frozen ice cream remember that's still running. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Try to crack on the you lid. Slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold. No, this is going to need something else. Some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. You're just wasting your time. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Equip the pry bar by- I know, I know. This orange machine is buzzing like an old bar not strong enough. It has a hand crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? Minus 20, okay. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Let's hold off on unplugging any of them for now. Two cables are plug an electric sizzle. The room is slightly something close to you. Why did you do that? I don't know why I'm plugging it. I do things without the any reason. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The ele This orange machine is dead still. Machine unplugged. It has a hand. But I still need a better pry bar. Cellar window. People's feet shuffling by on the street. Oh. Wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. And yeah, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. It opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one inside. has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. Is coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, 
Upstairs, the echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? You should investigate, see if someone's upstairs. Smear A your lush hands layer coal. of coal now covers your skin. Sink it. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karazai, ancient hero of Grav, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? I'm the reincarnation of an ancient Ilmaran warrior. Please wipe your face clean, officer. No, you're a proud warrior. Keep it. Don't wipe it. These three stripes give you strength in this dangerous Us. Place. It would be foolish to remove them. I'm exploring this dark place and I need the protection of my war, my war paint off and more. this protects you. This is traditional war paint. It will grant me safe passage with the spirits that guard this place. Okay, sure. Go ahead. A hollow ring echoes through the furnace. Your toe hurts. Oh, okay. Fairweather, T500. Remember that weakness you were looking for in the ceramic armor? Like, maybe it can only stop small, fast projectiles, but a large, slow-moving pry bar would shatter it? <laughs> or, if I run an electrical current through it, maybe it will melt. Or, personal favorite, frequency something something radio weapon? None of that would work. You need to shoot the part of the enemy that doesn't have Fairweather T-500 on it. Because the armor itself is invulnerable. Good news is, so are the armor pieces on you. Okay. Ooh. That's definitely good. My sure will definitely come in, in handy. All right. Insane mesh tank top. Let's check this area first, and then we'll scream into the. Oh, hold on. An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This chimney. must be where the entity lives. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. I see now. Postcard. Floorboards creak. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. Creaky floorboards. Is there something underneath them, maybe? Do I need a password still? Your flashlights, some of the writing, the handwriting, the full to outside. The I need the password and I need a better pry bar. But I also know Kuno has been stealing. Dust covers the War painted your face. It, pitch black. Okay, so the only way it can fail is if I critically fail. Something There's no, thank God. Breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. Chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then. Hello? You hear a woman's voice answer. You've awakened the entity. I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There is a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. A 
now we can go up here. Trays full of dice, colorful polyhedral dice, hundreds of them. Any sensors were new for us to contain thousands of dice. It makes die. He's a die maker. Hello. Makes dice. I'm Nia. Novelty dice maker. Hello, I'm Nia. A bird like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my music. Taps on her headphones. So, what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. You mad Milius? Yes, or maybe it's like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the table? Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the <laughs> stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Unless I'm confused with someone else, I'm a knock on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Bones light, head strong. Are playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Very good. My rate is 10 real per set. Unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there's any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first. But that's an unfocused field. Still my flashlight pointing at her face. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. You like role playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. She's thankful for the security they provide her. What do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling and rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about a dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. The lieutenant looks at his notebook. Then, the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. Mmm. Interesting. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids. Yeah. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes off the work to look out the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. You often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? So where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls, even though they've been repainted there. There's still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. 
Yeah. was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Create here. Lieutenant looks around the spacious room, its ceiling fading into the shadows above. Uh, I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. How do you explain what happened to all those companies, then? It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. I see. Plaisance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energies spared her somehow? Bookstop is doing that well. There are hardly any customers, and she has to her own daughter to keep the company going. All right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Whirling is part of the doomed commercial area. Say so, both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Center project. Still a separate building. The malicious energies can't reach there. And then there is me. <sighs> she sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there, scattered from knives, carving fly files, the wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? It's because she's in cahoots with the demons. It's because you're competent and dedicated to your craft. The curse doesn't affect people like you. <laughs> what, so the curse only affects people with poor work ethics? What you're describing isn't a curse. It's capitalism. The jig is up. The she-demon knows you've uncovered her true identity. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. We're starting to see that there is no curse, only business decisions and natural market fluctuations. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else Ooh. I can help you with today? Legendary shivers. You know what happened to our, uh, other tenants? Where else is oh, gone? Less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes. I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. No. My character is not like that. A bit of experimenting every yes. now and then isn't bad. Thank you, conceptualization. It's not about the haircut. It's about the confidence. Exactly. Wrong with a little bit of experimenting. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at risk youths away from drugs and crime. Maybe that's what Kuno needs community centric boxing clubs. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? Who is Kuno? Your guess is good as mine. He's sort of the king around here. The little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh, yes. You mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out of the window. It's oddly quiet there at the moment. I think it would take more than a gin to help that kid. And who is Artemita? A kind man from Zemsk. I heard Zemsk. he had some trouble with the law when he was younger. And that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. How did it work it out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamine. You should have known it. <laughs> Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. 
There used to be a company that promised to repair Windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Oh no. Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? What? What? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Cool, very cool about the debris, but what's a snuff milieu? It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. What does she mean, to get off on it? Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed Sub Rosas. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. Did someone here make stuffed animals or some mounts lying around? You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. But <laughs> what drugs exactly? <laughs> I need to know what drugs he was doing for my police he report. He got high on some weird taxidermy chemicals. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Even you can probably do better than that. You can almost see it. A small, sickly old man, hunched behind his work desk, his pants stained with old piss, stuffing a sad, stiff-legged raccoon dog. Damn. The entire scene looks tragic. Ah, uh, found creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Insect rights activists? Mm-hmm. The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. I like insects. Mm, really? Anyway. Poor guy. Suddenly, you get a feeling that insects are important to the case somehow. Oh? It's hard to say why. It's the phasmid! The phasmid's real! Those with the rotor blades and skis. They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Dressed to chin or hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. These transmissions say. The usual, I imagine. But he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Smile widens before she sees the lieutenant's face behind you. Men like that are a curse. Lieutenant is star. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. No, 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 no. No, let's make a sword out of one. Find a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. When her memory lights up on her she face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them getting into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seem to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway so she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. What I've seen so far... Project did look quite impressive. Yes, 
But when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult, especially if you've been drinking. That's too bad. I would have supported them. Project went great. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. Well, I'm stuck to the edge of the metallic desk. The result is one on a 20 sided die. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? Terrifying taxidermy bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Reva show, ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles, leans close, her hands up on her knees, like a stand up comedian ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed, what were the other ideas? Well, what, what were the other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. <laughs> what do they expect? 20 cents per hour is dog's pay. Oh, but they did. They did show up to work and not alone. There were also acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the ice cream stand. And they already had the bear. What about the bear? The bear. Didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents apiece, out of regular fridges. <laughs> I killed the bear! You did what? I <laughs> had to kill the bear to become the bear! I can see the stripes. The bear, those stripes where it keeps me human. That bear was one mighty mammal. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherium. Sounds cool. Scary. But cool. Megatherium? Megatherium. A mega wild beast. What's a mega wild it's beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. A wise and noble beast, guiding you towards the land where the streets are paved with drugs. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. Not now, you what? beast. You ever feel like your vision beast is trying to blackmail the fun out of you? No, officer. I don't have a vision beast. Normal people don't have vision beasts. Only drug addled madmen like the taxidermist do. What about horrific neckties? Normal people have horrific neckties? Neckties? I guess they do sometimes, officer. But I don't understand how it's relevant to our discussion. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. Uh, she seems a little sad finishing the story. Some dust beams swirl in the afternoon air. Her eyes follow it idly. Little sparkling embers under the window. Outside it's light. Light scatters from the low hanging cloud cover. There's always the threat of snow. No. Shut the fuck up, Uber. Anything else? Another foe. Build right. those buildings I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. You're telling me that you do have a doorbell there, which one? The one with an empty name card. It's the last one in the list. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. Sure, I'm listening. I'm pretty sure. Sure, I'm listening. Good. 
I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? A gust oh! of swoops through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. This is real, and I figure out why it spared you. Didn't we already talk about this? Because you're not in the same building. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sangeren 10. No. The old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up. Yet, it has a different address in the heart of the city. No, this used to be a coal plant. That's the safety curtains. You're in the chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. You're on the makeshift nest that she's carved out herself, bewildered. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? It's a different address in the heart of the city. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? Don't let her become complacent. She still needs to ward her soul against the evil forces. No one's really ever safe from the failure. She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. What? Do you know what this is? Uh, piece of metal shining on her index finger. Lucky charm? Some kind of war? It's a mourning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. The protective depths of the chimney! Oh, no, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> That's the game, but it was small and sad. It wasn't just a jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? Yes, coincidence is all that safeguards us. Yeah. Or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be. I'm being called out right game. now. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. Like to order a die for me? Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. Viral and tethered. Ah, yes. Fortress accident. It's too bad they never finished their game. The Viral and tethered die is a variation of a standard role playing die. Only, instead of plants, it uses motives of ice and death. And loss, of course. Ice, death, loss. Sounds like you. Damn. Getting called out again. I'm thinking something made from alligator jawbone, cast in black resin. The reptile bone is as white as ice, and dead as, well, death. For seven real, I could have it ready in eight hours. Standard role playing that. It's an icosidetrahedron. 24 sided die that can produce results for 2 sided, 3 sided, 4 sided, 6 sided, and 12 sided die with a single roll. Technically, you can also use it for many other sizes, but you may need to re roll results. Untreated bone is porous and prone to chipping. Cast it in something hard like resin, though, and voila, it's perfect. Alright, it's a deal. Great, see you in 8 hours then. Was there anything else? No. Bye. Eight hours. Postcard. Magnesium-based life form. Minus one shivers? No. 
Various roll. All red checks fail. What? What? That's terrible. I I have to look this one up. Disco Elysium Precarious World. Critical sex of failure thresholds lower by one. Uh, no, I don't want that at all. Honestly, that just sounds bad. Inexplicable feminist agenda. Okay. Ooh, I leveled up. I need authority, don't I? I feel like I'm going to need this a lot. Mm. Wow, I have a big fucking suggestion cap, huh? Hold off on authority. Because I know I'm going to have to do. I have to prove my authority to Titus. The Hardy Boys. But. It's, uh. I'm sure there's there's gonna be a lot of things I have to do to really do that anyways. Like deal with the union and shit. So might as well hold off on that, right? Oh, does Kuno care? He doesn't care. Oh, he's the fuck mad. What do you want with it? Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just gotta fly, pig. Not for you, pig. Kuno can't wait to see Kuno can't wait to see you shit your fat hand. That's all there is to it then. Don't be a pansy. Just good call, pig. Kuno doesn't Okay. Just jump. Wait, no. Let's do the apartments first. I... I didn't mean to do that. I don't want to waste my items. <laughs> like, sure, I've got a decent... What the hell happened here? The weather very much changed. It was not snowing. It was very sunny. Oh, hold on. Oh, we should probably tell Plaisance that it's not a curse. You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? She looks in that dark sarcophagus. She's looking for the right expression. Yes, yes. How was it? Leeching life energy from this bookstore. I knew it. Oh, such horrors that have been thrust upon us. She shakes her head. But what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Niha, and she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. She's not a sorceress or some malicious entity. She's a businesswoman like you. I don't understand. If it's not her, 
Then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? She looks perplexed. Before you say anything, ask yourself, is the woman really able to withstand the truth? She's squeezing on the pendant too tight. A drop of blood in her palm. Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. You've come this far, you know how to end it. There is an entity behind the entity. Here of all the arts darker than taxidermy and brought the voice based on this place. There's another entity more malignant pulling the strings in Martinez. Perhaps my travels, I will cross paths with it. A third order presence, yes. Yeah, let's go with the pendant. A great dark relief washes over her. I've heard of these triactors. In certain occult literature, that's too dark to dwell on for too long, and definitely not in the presence of my daughter. She gestures for you to be silent. I understand everything, sir. Thank you for your descending into the maelstrom. I will keep fort up here, strengthen the wards, do my best. And if you happen upon the third entity in your travels, may the Lord be with you. She performs neck shaped cross on her chest. Well, this has been absolutely educational. If we happen on the third present, it's the Phasmid! We will certainly come back to tell you. Yes, the venture continues in other waters, darker waters. Should we get out of here before the vortex collapses? Oh well. He suddenly feels if insects are very important to this case. There's a mysterious cryptid insect. What else could it be? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. for you right now. I'm scrolling rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Tomorrow? The smoker on the balcony. This is why we... Suddenly, he's a little worried about your memory. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Complete silence. Her lives here isn't home. Along with some buoyant dance track. Why can I interact with this? There's nothing for me here yet. I grab butts electrical wires. All right, well, it's time to try the jump, and if I fail that, deal with the union uh, measure head. The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. Examine closer. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. This is bad mojo, man! Fucking horrible mojo! The end draws now! Your chest feels tight, looking at them. It's closing in, caving in, ever tighter. Your breathing
breathing grows even heavier. You okay there? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You were looking pale there for a second. What are you looking at? Bullet holes look like the bullet holes we saw bullet before. Bullet holes generally look the same, so probably. But you're right. More old bullet holes from the revolution. How many people got shot during the revolution? Plenty. got two important doors that aren't operable yet. Oh, right. We got the bull. Let's give it to uh, the old man. The piety of snow always reminds me of the piety of a man's soul. If he's got principles. Found you guys a new bull. What is this? How are you mocking us? This isn't Popitonk. Now, now, no need to get angry again, René. I'm sure the officer tried his best. It's not like there's a bull kiosk here in Martinez. I really did try. Trying is worth as much as he's accomplished. In this case, almost nothing. Fine. You tried to write wrong. It's still a gun better than actual nothing. Is there anything you can tell you this rifle? It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Breech loading. Trevishal made. Good weapon, accurate, and reliable. His moves are quick and precise as he first checks the weapon, then aims it at the sea. This man knows firearms intimately. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? In the basement there, one in the bookshop. I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Ah, yes! King Philip III on his steed. A reminder of what Revachal once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. How should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. You feel like a leader should take care of his people before himself. Mission is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. There's some weariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times the before. The doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Let's talk about something else. Right. All right. Officer, the mere sight of police in Martinez makes me feel safer already. Oh. So he was less upset for throwing the bull and happier that I replaced it. The other guy is the opposite. Where he was very upset with me for doing it, not very happy that I replaced it. Or with what I replaced, I should say. Either way, that's another quest complete. That's another leveled up. Ooh. I feel like I need another thought cabinet, though. Zovian socioeconomics, magnesium baseline farm. White morning. Eh, eh. I'm looking at what they give me. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Um, burger 
or self-critique. Plus two volition, minus one logic, not too bad. Minus one visual calculus, and minus one authority. Hmm. A lot more EXP gain. And this one sucked. With vigorous self critique. Int and by red check failures, heal one morale. Learning cap for pain. Okay, so none of these are super great, even though I did get it. So I guess. Uh, derealization. That's the best of them all. All right. Tarpaulin cloak is still caught as on the Saviour Fair. No one has claimed it for their own. Backed by physical instrument. <laughs> All right. So I have minus one Saviour Fair too. So let's get rid of that. The shoes. It's the shoes. Let's go! I did not go. No, no. That's still too high. What were you thinking? You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't. I got you, I got you, Gratan. Let me just adjust your breathing a little bit. God, now I can't breathe at all. Stop doing this to me, Octa. You're supposed to be my friend. Hey, hey, what's happening? Can't breathe. It's okay. You're just having a little panic attack. Try to breathe as slowly as you can. The necktie lets go a little. It's a vicious grip easing around your neck. Colors return to the world around you. Thanks. Good. We can always come back when you are feeling better. All right, it's well. It's just a cloak after all. But you're, you do not... A I was under the impression we are on our way to meet the king of this castle under siege, Evrard, one of the people we are interviewing. Or it could be that we are just expecting. He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. I guess we gotta go in the hard way. Your measure had we go. Sent my body away. I okay, will do that later in the day, and I'm already sending him away. Was the racist lorry driver ever anything more for me? Looking for something odd? You could push him by asking him to show you the soles of his boots. He definitely been admiring the stompers, aren't? On the bottom of the man's boots, you see an intricate tangle of treads with no immediately discernible pattern. The wind howls over the Bay of Rivershaw, 
A cascade of cold air flowing through the tangled city streets. Is that a map of Ravishol? It sure is. Where'd you get boots like that? Custom made. Cost me a pretty penny. Rubs back to his bowling head, but why? You'll see when the time comes, officer. True patriots carry Ravishol in their very souls. Technically, you're stomping on Ravishol every step you take. Huh. I know you people don't understand poetry. All right, you're racist. The young woman at the giant side agrees. Measure heads, babe. Don't say anything. Size him up first. Say nothing. Size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? A ripple of muscle passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. Cover your chest, still stay down. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? He looks down at you, taking stock of your physique. Merely standing up makes you sweat profusely. Your breathing is erratic. Your own <laughs> heartbeat in your ears grows frantic, and you feel your blood pressure rise. Stop it! You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman and your pedomorphic friend. <coughs> this display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. Uh, I'm pleased we need to get into the harbor. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to Ulrul. His face contorts in disgust as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Ulrul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Enough. I need you to open the door to the harbor. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the ham sandwich race is waning. Show him the ham still got it. Willingly calling yourself a ham <laughs> sandwich. How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind it just out of reach it must be the one that opens a door to the harbor push him out of the way that is right you should leave he doesn't the even stage flinch of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war 
bring your troops to the Zimenan Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Wool, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art and your microcephalic skulls. This is your chance. He's talking. Rip into him with a punch and catch him off guard. No, don't rip into anyone. You're sensitive. Remember? Communicate. No! Knock him out! How did this happen? Your little fist is in his giant hand, and he's squeezing it. It hurts. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. Fuck you! Your fist cracks in his hand like a right ankle. Pain shoots up into your brain. As the words to the song. I won't say anything. I let this death happen. Feel something in your chest. And I've never had a pressure. health death. It's spreading to your left arm. Your <clears throat> jaw. I'm sure it's just heartburn. No, oh God. It's many years of combined self neglect and self abuse. Try to make conscious. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see in her face. Like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective <coughs> final of heart attack. RCM passed away yesterday. <clears throat> His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who knew him. He was the heaviest drinker I'd ever met. Captain Ptolemy Price, the deceased superior the officer, cracking their wrists in the background. Dicker. He loved his liquor, sure, said Detective Chester McLean, friend and colleague. But I think before he ever had a heart attack, his heart was broken. According to an official statement given by the RCM, the officer was on the brink of solving a murder case. Alright. Um, keep authority, physical instrument. Oh, I do have my physical instrument. Shit. Realization, suggestion. <clears throat> Interfacing. Drama. Composure. Authority composure. What is this? I didn't mean to do really that. Standing up. Stop. <coughs> this is the Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to. You have succumbed. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. Show him the hand still got it. Jerking motion. Signs of a late stage <coughs> neurodegenerative disorder. You get. You yeah, 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 yeah. Is it is? There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. Enough with this begging. You should leave this day. Bring your troops. The walls will be Same lined thing. with bottles of Al Wool. All right, now this time it's not minus. Inside, we will store the oats to almost Let's go! You call out, and your microcephalic skull. Just like that, instinct took over. A solid strike straight into his throat, into the cartilage. You could swear you felt the soft pad break. The man is reeling. 
gasping for air. Time stands still around you. In the distance, the sounds of the harbor are falling silent. All you hear is a small gurgling sound as a trickle of blood appears on the man's lip. Wait. I think I remember this. Hold on. Yeah, I think if you don't go for the kick, you fail, even if you had succeeded. Because I remember something about the kick. I couldn't remember if the kick was the fail or the other one was the fail. Anyways, this go Inferno. As you slam your fist on the button, the man collapses entirely, his head rolling to the side. Uh, achievement unlocked, hyperstellar law official, say seven deranged superstar lines. Like you're the new measurehead now. Her voice is surprisingly calm. No one is the new measurehead. Let's go before he gets up. Well, the lieutenant makes haste towards the door. Wait, what if we like rob him first? The man is. Yeah, okay. Plastic tower, money. Desperado. You are what is the flying desperado? It's that really cool flying desperado spin kick you did, Boyadero. Often performed by the most hard body Boyaderos on the steps. Yeah, I sure did that thing. So, what's on your mind this time? Actually, <laughs> worker, like you guys, show this little card. It's only because it's a bad idea. And I can get EXP from it all. It's a mag, nice. Minus one drama plus one visual calculus. Ooh. An imposing combination of a punch <clears throat> clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Now your muscle memory dial a random number. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. Right now, you're thinking undoubtedly. Sure, 
Why not? Nothing tricky about that. You just do, fail, repeat. Alright, well, we'll come back to that. The tarpaulin cloak is still hanging on the railing. As your fingers touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingers. Time is it for us to make food? I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. That. All right, and this coat has plus one shivers, which means I want to wear it. God, it looked disgusting. It's just a better shirt than this one. It's also just a better coat. <laughs> Still wearing the fucking gardening gloves. to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. Volition? <clears throat> this is where Renee works. I'm gonna have a look around. If you must. But please hurry. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously all. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabinet uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Rene looks like he's about to smile. This photo must be tied to some good memories. Why did you take that picture of Rene? I'm gonna ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure, as long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin grey pillow is attached to the seat. Secure to the stiles by black ribbons, stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single moat. The drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, prophet's disease, Speaking sudden of kills, death, I never took my own tear death. Erectile malfunction. Erectile malfunction. Flatulence. Watery blood. Black mucus. Uncontrollable weeping. Increased sensitivity to la opera. Inoperable joint disorder. Total spinal collapse. Maybe this was a bad idea. Man, if I help myself with some I'm else. not here to tell you what to do, detective. You take the painkillers. They are yours now. Ooh. I have a lot of morale now. You stand and exit the booth. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna be right back. And uh, put food on.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Around you, great machines and questions. Several knobs, two buttons marked Marsh and Arendt are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Marsh on, Arendt off. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. This crane was built with a purpose, which has now been fulfilled. To move this container. What's inside? Who can say? All you know is, it's special. I can't see how that was worth the wreckers. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. The crane does not return to its original position. It does not move at all. See? You've made it was satisfying, Cam. <laughs> as much as you hate it, you understand me. Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. Is this like your thing with that wall again? Maybe. I can't tell. I think we should investigate further. You do? Because I don't. Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? I don't know. It just feels special. It's a cargo container, detective. Just like all the others. He doesn't even look at it. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to interview the union boss. No reply. The knot produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. Open. You attempt to turn the handle. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Persuade the door to open. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Getting physical wasn't an because option. What wasn't an option? Using my body over my now wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. I have rhetoric changing. No, okay. This is the only rhetoric changing I have. My rhetoric is already a one. This is my, uh... What is giving me minus rhetoric? This one. It's a whole ass hour left for it. Damn. Shipyard head is oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. of oil and rest comes from the cows in front of you. Smells like blood. Ooh, half life. For a change. They're really just leaving spare change everywhere. Hey! Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. 
Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. Oh, really? The accent <laughs> is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he is Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moonbeam. <laughs> Ubisunt question mark sick. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Error. Ah. Iron Man is so engaged in his work he doesn't notice you. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. He smiles. How can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. <laughs> I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean... I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Um, you're Ubi, right? <clears throat> oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. Don't worry, I would oh, never sir, think that. Just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. I see. Sure, mister. About what? Uh, everyone in the harbor is empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. Who leads them in the confidential look? We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. Buzz thing. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. A week. For a week or so. Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Buzz and his call, sir. And his boys <clears throat> stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everard telling him to take some time off. Really? Did they kill someone? No, I don't think they killed anyone. Let's better talk about something else. Titus and his boys do good work. I don't want to get them in trouble over a little drinking. Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellet. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douay Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always <coughs> busy keeping things running here. Yes, oh, I, I am. Muted. Yes, I am. That's why I loudly cleared my throat. That was my bad. Is this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. Oh, the gardener. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. I think you're doing a great job around here, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. The lieutenant smiles at the little man. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. 
He didn't think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Oh, he's Sometimes so wholesome. Some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. Uh, what's in the container over oh, there? That, one. that should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing. Told you. Told you. Look for a leader of dog workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everhart then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Austin, he's immediately. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find oh, this Mr. man. Mr. Ever is where he always is. In his office, of course. Getting tears around. All right. Bye bye now. All right, logic. What's logic? I think I'm gonna be my only logic off though. My logic is not super great right now. Yeah, all of my intelligence ones are not great. Try it, because honestly, it was the worst thing that could Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse. It's okay, no I'm trouble at all, mister. You were talking too oh, much. Oh, I'm just making <clears throat> some covers for them containers here. Yes, Come on, I can get a 28%. Yes, the containers in the yard are green. What did I fucking talk country, about? And the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in union color. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. There appear to be cisterns underneath the Union container covers. Looks like a massive redecorating option, Kim. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. Uh, what's underneath these red covers? Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. Here's the yard green, mountain rising behind Leo is all red. Union colors. Uh, cisterns underneath the Union container covers. They haven't told you why you need to change the covers. No, not really. <clears throat> Mr. Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. I see. You've been very oh, helpful. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. He's a very nice guy. I love him. Yeah, I'm gonna be right back. I think my water's boiling.
All right, I'm back. Here we go. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. Continue. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Are you in charge of the dock workers? Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. Dubois? It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite to his giant desk. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. The Weasley voice. Man relaxes into his chair and continues. I offer you my hand, but unfortunately, my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. Lieutenant nods at you and on the chair. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that man. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's... He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. Take Excellent, a seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you are a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be a great use to one another. He rem gives you a sly wink. Remain serious. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Continue. The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. Relax, it's buddy. violating your backside. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. Went to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Points at it again. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. You know Gar. Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. Keep it. I'm good. Okay, I'm not in this okay. pocket. I respect a man with principles. Not gonna no let him outside. have that over me. Crosses his arms on his ample midsection, sinks further into his chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. How does he know? His slug-like lips move, but... All you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. How do you know? How do you know about I lost know gun? everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Officer, we will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to cry because you lost your gun. How do I always and keep those two children barrels loaded? Shoot themselves with it. You want to cry? God. 
Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this? Uh, this is going to be bad. Dubois, he keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? I was. You need to cool the fuck Very health wise leak. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. <sighs> Large man snaps his fingers to no factor in some stupor. Keep sliding down the chair like a cello shot. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you oh, having oh. some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion. Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Now I'm good as it gets, Mr. Dubois. Maybe we just throw your hands above your head. I can see your condition isn't terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Huh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Thank you, Kim. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin Ames. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But? But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. I've opened a few doors in my life. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colors, Harry. Stop calling me Harry. This really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son, with your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up, and when he does, you're going to come out on top. Why don't you just open Harry, yourself? I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary... You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you a mean by a weasel? A weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, <clears throat> Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martin Ames. Fine. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. I'm going there. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? And gets over it in two seconds. Seems like it didn't really hurt him. I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. Thank you for your understanding. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. I'm taken. 
Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? <coughs> call me Dubois. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the hanged corpse called you, Harry. That's really my name. My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. I'm just testing so you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat boulder. Words what? flow like a river of honey from his lips. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Inspects ever out of her spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? <clears throat> me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. It's Harry. <sighs> Harry Dubois. You feel like a Dubois. But you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. Interesting. You don't feel like any of these things. Damn it. You know what your name is. You have a sophisticated name, like that of a count or a beautiful man. Sure, okay. You're Harold. Harmon. Haroldimus. But that's not what the record says. The record says Harry Dubois, a real man's name. <sighs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. Ah, of course, Harry, of course. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. I'm trying to guilt me. Your gun will be found. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And work... Yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun. Now, please, <sighs> let the professionals do their job. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. He is not. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. What's in the container? It's your My office. Dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. Awesome Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking? Maybe that's the way to go about <laughs> the container. You should at least try... Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great. When I get stuck in here? Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Okay. So I gotta break open that guy's apartment. Which means I gotta talk to Manana. So, how'd you like a harbor? It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Why is all space? You talk to the boss, eye to eye. 
like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Key to door. Key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? He said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I got you. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. I'm not opening this door for myself. I'm opening it for all working men. I knew this man was a commie. He smiles, tilting his and head. It's a good thing you're doing too. Thanks. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rag. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. His gaze wanders off into the distance. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? <clears throat> to feed our children, I guess. And then I'll switch over those taxes. Weasel person will be home. I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. Man takes a big sip from his flask. He is, and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. Ask him about the Hardy Boys. Do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Ebrard's law. But really, they're just like you. Take a swig from his flask. Is he actually comparing you, an officer of the law, to some neighborhood vigilantes? Let it go. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. Any idea what you're wearing, man? Mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? He shakes his head solemnly. A dark work is involved in the killing. What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Pushed how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. What does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Did you kill him? I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. He means a more violent faction could easily take care of such a thing. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. Good talking to you. Love that man. The suicide of Kraz Mazov. <laughs> it's clearly a lie. Kraz Mazov didn't shoot himself. Reaction was on the counteroffensive. The State Day Palace in Mirova was surrounded. He was either assassinated or died in the bombing. You might even have evidence to support this somewhere in your brain. Mazov was never given a state funeral by the communists. Some people even say the body that was recovered from the ruins wasn't his. There, good. Hero restored to glory. Carry on, comrade. <laughs> Plus one rhetoric? And weight check failures heal all morale. My rhetoric went from one to three because it was minus one and now it's plus one from the thought. front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Frieza. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Because Frieza was incompetent, foolish, and cruel. In short, the embodiment of everything the communards wished to overthrow. It's satire, you see. To your Pages. disappointment, there aren't any full-color pictures to direct your attention. Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. After rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International development, Kunst und Kultur, and local concerns. Just inside the cover, 
There's also an editor's note. Read the editor's Comrade, note. As you know, this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression, Du Cristal a la Fume. This was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turned to smoke under communism. But like the structures of capitalist ideology, we too are at risk of going a la fume. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon feed their readers reassuring drivel, La Fume is committed to telling the radical truth, even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. No, so please, I don't want to lose If you value our radical Mazovian perspective on contemporary politics, culture, and international affairs, please consider subscribing today. Yours in struggle, the editors. Him, I think this is a communist magazine. What do you expect? It was laying around the office of the Debarders Union. They're probably bankrolling this thing. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The this section includes a long, tedious critique. You uh -huh. also skip over an article about heavy fuel oil smuggling along the Mes Messina border. Face it, you really aren't. You flip back to the front of the... It takes a moment, culture? but gradually it dawns on you that Kunst und Kultur must mean art and, and culture. As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio plays, as well as a brief artist spotlight the skull. featuring a local artist identified only as C.S. The main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, A Critical Mazovian Perspective. This so-called artist spotlight is really just a brief Q&A made all the briefer by the subject's evident hostility to her interviewer. That certainly sounds like a certain uh -huh. delinquent youth who likes to harass you from her balcony. The, top the actual article is surprisingly light on details, but after skimming a page or two, you gather that it has something to do with motor carriage racing. If you don't follow it, you only ever hear about the ludicrous sponsorships and obscene death toll. You think you're settling in for a relaxing recap of the most recent season, maybe sprinkled with some nice anecdotes about a few of the more colorful drivers. Instead, you find yourself skimming a 10,000 word feature about all the What's wrong with tip -top? where to even start. For one, there's the crass commercialism of its sponsorships, and then there's the practically criminal emphasis on deadly motor crashes. You wrote this. Oddly enough, this article has two bylines. Nastep and Kalada Bernal and Exilus Buka. There's no way those are real names. Yeah. Have you ever met anyone named Exilus? Under capitalism, the article says, yeah, thus, yeah. the so-called tourney you can see them crash. that precisely is what's problematic about it. Were it not for the promise at the end of the day, it's the destruction of these 750,000 really in for the see, violence. One cannot avoid the conclusion that Tip Top Tourney is simply the apotheosis of spectacular entertainment. Kim, did you know Tip Top Tourney is actually an or orgiastic ritual of capitalist destruction? I, no I can safely say the thought had never crossed my mind, Detective. I wonder what else is really just a metaphor for life under I'm capitalism. Sure what things are, if the young men who wrote this article have to be. If I had to wager. I'd say they've never even seen the inside of a motor, much less a motor race. You flip back to the front of the magazine. Local Unsurprisingly, concerns. much of this section is taken up with articles declaring you skim the headlines. Paint the harbor red and white. Martinized. Finally, there's a brief article by the writer, G. Martin, accusing the owner of the Cape Side apartments of illegally attempting to evict certain communist tenants simply for not having paid their rent. Urgent rent just to live somewhere is pretty outrageous. The writer G. Martin remarks dryly that capitalists love wealth redistrib- You flip back to the front of- Okay. Um... No, it's the task. 17 communists. Communisms. I have done 17 communisms. Now I can 
also do this. The bullet is still safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. You can't remember what happened. Are you kidding me? What makes you think you're going to remember Arcane Fire? Whatever. It was a free heal. Which is why I did it. It was either gonna heal me or progress. So I guess I need to put another fucking point in the hand-eye coordination. Dude, this is what I hate about dice rolls. That's just bullshit. Wait, no wrong way. So it's not tomorrow, it's any time, like 21 o'clock. What is this? Just an ordinary war. Conceptualization. I don't have the... It's evening buff, so I'll hold off on that. This must be it. The basement door is where the war... You try to be as silent as you can. Finally... The door up. The sound of the key turning is still good job. Let's go now. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there as you hold the open door. We're going in. Alright, what do we got? Magnesium. Smell of disinfectant in the room smells like chemicals. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling Colonial mug collection. Others. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the surround... There's something disdainful in the way the curves and lines of the bodies were drawn. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Real this asshole? person is unhappy. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. Hell yeah! Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor. The same mocking lines. There's the missing teen soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the wording's container to dump his trash. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. I think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes no. in the trash. I'm not expecting too much from this clothes in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter. But still, a nice coincidence. Shirt. One of the red sun on the flag. This is the flag of Rebishol, the suzerainty. That's the sun. This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. What's the sevenfold sun it's miracle? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. It is but one of the many strange optic atmospheric phenomenon of this wondrous archipelago. You're sure you once saw sun dogs in your youth and blue flares. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun He's a so fascist! Close. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. That explains the racist mugs. Bare-haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. In the world of walking sticks. There's a racist mug collection. 
Master Investigator. You just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places. My duty is a cop to investigate every square inch of this world. Thanks, boy. The world's secrets were made for you. They wait patiently. Jamrock Shuffle. Uh, the Jamrock Shuffle. Using behavior. Uh, find better loot in locked containers. Okay. Fortunately, I need to put a point into... Oh, I have pings. Pings. Uh, so... Right, I want to talk to Cindy. Hello again, officers. Never mind. No new dialogue options. God ass. I'm excited. Figure out same fingertips. I have the reckoner a bit dry. Look smart. Summer plans. Work it. A normal day for a normal guy. Get your foot down. Shoes too big to fill. Bye bye, bugs. Vivid imagination. I didn't realize that they had Apple Money Maker Man like descriptions to why they gave you those stats. Real statement to wear. Unsavory order. Order? Odor. Bouncing the books, filthy boho, probably a narcomania. <laughs> awesome watchtower heals. Heals ridiculously high. Healing twitchy bum brain. Technically insane. God ass, hindsighted. Tight around the thighs, tight around the crotch. Taking back the streets. No line neighborhood. Halogen watermarks. Unfiltered contact. Aye, Captain. After serial pause. Pause? Poise. What's wrong with me today? Good with numbers. Well, time to make our way all the way back to the Union. The note is written with a blue... Uh, there was nothing. He gave me the card to get in and I wanted to look for that. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to... I'm very glad to hear that. Lola. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? You're right, Harry. You only had to unlock the door. Now let's get down to brass tacks. 
It's time for Wait. men like me and you to figure out Should who's I have talked about why. it? Real police work is gonna start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is gonna be good. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Saramoritsa. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do <laughs> is kill the village elephant. Hold on, you're a village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village. But the mercs and their brutality are very real. Go now, on. I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Wait, they move the container? Yes. I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. <laughs> my fun the container? The company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Chicks Even head. their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy. The one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. Who did the push? There's a militant wing inside the union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood making sure everything runs smoothly. They're like you guys. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. So the idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. If he's just boasting, then it sure doesn't feel like that to you. He's not worried. a bullet in the hangman's head. So they shot him? He was shot in the head before he was hanged. How odd. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I took a look into that yard. What I do know is, the case is in safe hands. If anyone can get to the bottom of this shot and hanged man, it's my two little policemen. Godspeed, policemen. How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. 
The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Name of the company is Pennell this time. Might have been some of Of course. Course. You're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. But you're a lawyer, hey, Liz girl. is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Oh, Titus Hardy and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Seven. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Ask them to but cooperate of course, with me. It's the least I can do for my good. You can now go and tell Titus about this. Also, Harry, here's five real. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you, just holding it out there. But I'm willing to share information. Was there anything else? Um. Was it a good tour? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martinez. And of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yes, Harry, it's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just- A man of the left. So you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. More left than you are. You're saying it, but I don't believe you. You know how I've it got is. 17 Companies communism points. Agent provocateurs everywhere. I'm barricaded in this fortress of mine, and I need to get a message out. Will you help me? And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. But he thinks. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martin Ames, and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth center in Martinez. It will be righteous. We're gonna get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. On the coast, Harry, across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there, a little village across they're calling the canal. it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. Water drips from the eaves. A woman looks at her freshly tarred skiff. There's a pair of cavalry boots under the fish in the box, and the wind howls like a vicious spirit. They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth center designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. 
I hear there is some trouble with the water lock, but they should fix once you have the signatures. Mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I'll know you're a solid socialist. Let's hear it, Harry. Drama, I'm fair. Of course, Harry. See you soon. Valsani, Lillian Carter. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not the perfect solution, but... Drama. That's the minus drama. Du -du -du Civilization logic. Reaction speed. Half light. Okay, so I think these are the only things that affect drama. Mr. Debrah, a pla Let's hear it, Harry. Come on! Everard's large hands are covering the folder. But the look on his face says, I know every- Oh, Harry. Oh, wow. I'm sure it's not that bad. It's worst he has an old RCM folder. So how about it, Harry? You need assistance, I presume? I'll write it with a red check. Of course, Harry, of course. Damn it. Oh, well. It is what it is. Okay. And then it was what logic? It's too logic. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A twelve. There yes. is no loophole. The simple truth is, the current residents are going to lose their street access, and for the next twelve to forty months, their lives will be dominated. By constant construction noise right next door. Were there ramifications Once of this? the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. I should have seen it. Ten fans as he reads all the document. Yeah? Probably has eyes on us, but we could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed. Or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. However, we'll need access to the coast before we do anything. Everhart won't believe you got villagers' signatures if you can't even get to the village. You can try a forgery as soon as we can cross the water lock. So true, so true. Okay. Not gonna fuck over those people. Because that's fucked up. No, I want. Oh, that's why it's a jacket. Okay. And then I guess this. This or this, they're all fine shirts, I guess, for my purposes. Right, excuse me. All right, so we got to deal with party before the cargo container. I 
made it out of me to do that because I failed a 92% chance. The bullet is still safely sealed away. A rifle. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique. Make. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belma grade rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian theater of the anti centennial revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you. The dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement of the commercial area. It's desk. unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Is anyone still making these rifles? No, but Zeliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Who uses Belma Gray rifles these days? Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache, only in working order. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? Okay. And? Belma Gray An rifle. Antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Ravachol. I have to thing. hand it to the monarchs. It's quite admirable that they took the advice of criminologists last century and banned the use of breech loaders in peacetime. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Makes you consider every shot. I like Imagine it. Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. <laughs> Looks at camera. But back to the investigation. Foreign guerrilla fighters. Let's find out. Next step, finding the gun itself. Okay. This one. Well, this is just impossible now because I got it. Backyard wall, specialization, damage ledger. Ooh, I can probably do that pretty easily now. Considering all the logic buffs I have. Ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of yes. Yes. You can piece them together using the alphanumeric code on the margin. It always begins with HDB41. Then date of initialization and time of arrival on the scene, followed by the title. Harry For Dubois example, Precinct HDB41. Four one one HDB. two zero one one seven zero zero. The next world move. 41 is your precinct. What is HDV? It's safe to say. Those are the initials of the officer responsible for the case. Your initials. Harry Dubois. HDV. Still there feels we go. like there's something missing from that. <laughs> I think what you meant to say was RAC. Rafael Ambrosius Castell. No. The alphanumeric begins with HD. I'm ready to admit I'm an RFL and get That's on with my life. To hear. Now, detective, it takes half an hour to piece one of these together, if you still want to. Here are your options. Not much All right, we'll cheap. revisit those later, because I don't want to spend half an hour of in-game time. Yet. Plus one. Okay, I don't know why it was... Probably because it changed. It was from the change. Mm. 
got to confront the Hardy Boys now, I guess. Got to authority check them. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Interesting. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Yep. Uh -huh. Wait. Clowns are indeed still here. <laughs> okay. You still on about that bullet? A bullet and a hang. Indeed. Mighty. How did it get there? Titus, fix some well, Titus. There are so many bullets in the world and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it sounds a little logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. Why was this the victim wow. said? He got it. Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. And his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act, they don't like you knowing this. Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They've never been. It's not like he blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there somewhere. Oh, so you went and talked to my mom. She's making me play with you. Is that it, Lomi? And what's gonna happen if we don't? You gonna go and tell on us? You gonna let him talk to me like that, Titus? He turns his eyes full of hurt to the big man. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am, you big pussy. The old man sent word you'd be around again. That's the reason I'm being so forthcoming with you. Ooh. Don't wear it out.
breakthrough imminent. Jamais vu derealization. Jamais vu, the opposite of déjà vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And for who knows how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is a fundamental question. All until your encounters with friends one, plus one EXP for every orb clicked. Maybe sitting imbeciles. Yeah, you are. Talk to her. Oh, hello, dear. Suggestion. There you are again. From, uh, Traverse. I think I had something that was plus suggestion. If any of them were wearing anything that's minus suggestion. Yeah. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Hey, Lena. Uh, I'd like to hear about some of the cryptids you've studied. Could you tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company, too. One cryptid. Not a couple. One. This one turned into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Okay, Kim. Just one he little cryptid. I promise. A waiting posture. Cryptids, cryptids. Let's hear about all the interesting cryptids. Ooh, tough choice there. Uh, what's the tiniest cryptid? Cryobacter catlensis. She answers immediately. Cryobacter catlensis. Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Kotla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Caitlin Mijanu some 70 years ago. What's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijanu found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate. Certainly from before recorded history, Mijanu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. Injected herself with it. Yes. The bacteria had survived in the ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. It's actually a little hard to see. But do go on. Preparing for the end time. She wanted to witness and record the twilight proceedings. Mm-hmm. Mijanu did talk about the end of the world a great deal before her abrupt departure. Everyone thought the bacteria had driven her mad, but she really was a brilliant woman. Maybe the cryobacter catlensis allowed her to see something no one else could. That's the most dangerous cryptid. Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. Right, okay, we can move on for now. He nods approvingly. I did promise him. I did promise him. I can come back later alone. After we interview the man in the apartment at 2100. And I send him off with the body. Fifteen five three. That's ooh, that's twenty three thirty. Sheesh. That's a ways away. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass, 
like bony fingers. Nothing. Just black tangles like my hair. <laughs> Damaged morale. Healed morale. The wind in the yard doesn't reach the Hawthorne, nor does the light come in from this window. Window looks out here. What would it tell me? What do you see? Now I just gotta figure out a kill time until twenty one hundred. And actually, I happen to know the best way to do that. So let's head on over there. I guess we could talk to Joyce. Construction here once decades ago. Whirling isn't much bigger than the sloop. It's more than you'll ever earn in all of your life. Got us on the water, green plants under the calm surface. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Uh, to try Eric yeah. there. Finally. Time to choose sides. You and the cause of capital. He's the hero of the workers' movement. He's the champion of sworn fealty to. Huh. Shy side shifting class night. And here I thought my modest payment of a hundred and thirty real would stick. Shakes her head and mock her. In a good humor. That was a donation. It has been registered, and it will really yield you no favors. Another thing, the position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policies. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I am not a corrupt verm myself. How could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping intellectually speaking it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about tell her she'll like you for it yes your disgusting necktie agrees completely let's gossip of course detective should something come up later down the road don't be afraid to drop by for a chat until then is there anything I can help you with? Reality lowdown More time. lessons in basic reality. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. What is all of this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world what is this? World? The only one, I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. Eating pearls of eyes, look to the sea. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. You see. Great bodies of water. Forest covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. There is a term of endearment they coined for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world. Discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. What is it? Elysium. The world needs a term of endearment, Elysium. It does. There are those who would call it hell. What is hell? A term of hatred that originates, like many such things, with the Mest Petro fascists. Or picture oh, yet. You want a picture of the world? 
There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. Okay. Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside, sideways. Then sideways. What shape is this world though? We used to think it was a sphere. But that is beginning to look less and less likely by the day. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids. But the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. ORG. Occident Revishore Grad. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three scientific contributors, Six now. they're piecing together a dark grey corona. Yes. Dark grey corona? Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are grey flares and prominences, even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. Huh. A cold fear seeps into you. Do you the pale? What do you mean corona? They say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet. Or, to speak more plainly, imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. I am sorry, dear. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut. Bring us together. However naive it may sound. Fractured Corona doesn't feel like it's going to bring anyone we together. Have misimagined it. I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's it's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. Well, if you say it's disco. See, everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. However wasted its opportunities. The cold seeps into you. The air is heavy with 80% humidity. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. The lieutenant observes you both silently. He adjusts his glasses. Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog. Legendary! It's wounds in the grass. Modifier is plus four, so I just needed a ten, and I rolled. Oh, I need to beat a fourteen, not an eighteen. I I rolled an eighteen. Yeah. So I only need to roll a six, which. Okay, yeah. Not impossible, but unlikely. To his left, his partner Emil Mullins whispers. You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset? Tequila Sunset? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, ML. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. What am I? You? You're an officer of the RCM. The Revishol Citizens Militia. Precise Mundo. Good. What is the Revishore Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revishore, Detective. Yes, we are the Revishore Citizens Militia. You say de facto? Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the Twilight of International Law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. You mean? The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfarer, and Aliments Acts, through pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. All three are good to know when we are out policing. Basically a lackey of capital for all the foreign interests. There's nothing basic about your role, Detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly 
permanent provisional rulers like it. She leans in. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. Why? The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. They called it the International Zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition <sighs> failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. I see. They will never forgive you. We stepped up where they did it. That's somewhat of an exaggeration. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Revacholians get to keep the peace in Revachol, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. Yes, Lieutenant. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. Thank you. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, <laughs> I'm here to help. What is pale? is not, technically speaking, part of reality. Yes. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. We do have a case to attend to. His voice is low, but firm. Of course, Lieutenant. Let's try something else. Hello. The Lieutenant glances at you from the corner of his eye. Was he just... Worried that you would find out something awful? Dramatic, traumatic. Like... You could sneak back later when the lieutenant is not here, unless you can convince him to step aside. Is what you want to do, but should you? He expressly stated you shouldn't hear about it. What if it? Yes. Glad to have been of assistance. And I need more volition. There's a lot of volition checks that I, uh, not been doing very well in. Not to mention it'll help give me more morale to lose. Well, no, because I don't lose any morale anymore because I recover it. Alright, I'm gonna head over to the apartment. And speed time up by reading my cases. The traffic now he's falling on the city. Maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. Rules interact with the ledger of failure and it's hatred. The ledger you found in the trap. It takes about half an hour to piece one together using the system you've devised. Which one do you want? The unsolvable case. A.K.A. Leslie and Burke. A.K.A. The public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk is a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. You were so drunk, you didn't remember what it was when you signed on. That, or you were high. Leslie Sounds like me. will always take his pants off when he's drunk. Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away, because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypassers and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which in their 40s or 50s, it's hard to tell because of their distorted features, is a medical improbability <laughs> on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. Proceed. Threatening fines, dragging them to the station. Locking them up in the hell holes they live in. Locking them up in the station. Hypnotherapy. Even trying to get the local gang of Zemyaki to take them out. The Zemyaki gave them ethanol, so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. You tried it all. 
And still the complaints wouldn't stop, as they hadn't stopped for ten years. It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? Leslie is doing public indecency. Good. You're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Bert breaking things, and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day, when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. The officer is also drunk. Way more drunk than Burke there. And let's be fair, you also have party eyes. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face, then proceed to beat him unconscious with it. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. I the see. The officer began to cry. That's what fucked up my ledger. Who, at this point, is tending to Burke. He came at us, and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. Can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? Damn, that's like a turn. Off the street. The complaints stop. The unsolvable case is solved. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? Uh, square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull. Staring at the wall, her mouth agape. What? That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry wound was square shaped. You never found the bullet. And then another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. A sequence killer. Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? Don't worry. One day, one day you may still catch the man with the square gun. Oh, I never solved it. Not much has changed in the meanwhile. I am not sliding over from the secret compartment. Kim, what are you doing? Walking in there. He's clipping! Clipping yeah. through the wall! We <laughs> the no, I'm not gonna talk about the boots I'm wearing. What about me? I'm wearing a revolutionary brigade jacket, aren't you? What? These? Zips of large just collar. Seasonal clothing. Look like Aaron Pants, good for star tools. Where is going? I have this place in my head where I develop new ideas and connections. Interesting. I think it's called a brain. It's no mere brain. No, it's more than that. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, suspect that you have some kind of thing with revolutionary air brigades. I do not have a thing with revolutionary air brigades in particular. Just air brigades, though? Okay, I wanted to become an aerostatic pilot. Then I turned 10 and realized we no longer have an air force. Which the revolutionary is going to Absolutely it? nothing. Thank you, mind is satisfied. Good. It's all Good. for now. I'm literally not gonna ever touch the one that is very is inappropriate. No one answers. We should return tomorrow. Tomorrow at 9 p.m. Okay, so even though it's 9 p.m. right now, okay, whatever video game. Whatever. Well, I'm gonna send Kim off with the body. 
check this. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Do I have conceptualization? I'm close. Yes. Just an ordinary wall. Let's go! Because you see it, finally. This wall is sublime. Look at it. The shadows, the colors. Let the conceptual joy flow into your pupils and blossom to thoughts in your brain. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of Warcraft. Color peeled from the very face of God. More! Oh, wall father. I must paint this wall, add even more beauty to it. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. First, I know you're tired, but taking a look at this wall, draw nourishment from its beauty. Mm hmm. It looks sure. uh, up the wall and back at you. Draw, I'll find the materials. Let me come back to this I suppose wall. we have to best buy it again at some point in the world. He says in a tone of resignation. <laughs> Uh, beautiful wall, and with Pierre, take your brush, you would have one, then paint, and then the act itself. Cindy, I require your paint. Hello again, officers. I need have some you paint. Come to admire my mural. And your brush, too. What for? For art. It's for art, well, okay? Well, if it's for art, but... What kind of art are we talking about? Grand art. Art deluxe. The artsiest. The most groundbreaking. Let me stop you right there, Piggy. You have no idea, do you? No idea. No brush? Fuck off. Crush your man's dreams like that. I hope you're... I hope you're happy. There, there, Piggy. I guess art just isn't really you. Because you suck. In life and in everything. She's not wrong. All right. All right, Kim. Take it the away. man is decom The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. All right. Takes a chain-like body bag. One glass of I will need face. a little help carrying him. You take the hand. I'll take the hand. Back of the car straight to the motor carriage. I'll see you tomorrow, Kim. Oh, right, we gotta hear about more cryptids. But first things first, we're taking a bath. Come to wash death off of us. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are right now. Oh. That soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Undress, close your eyes and the submerge. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting. Like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks. Like sad duckies. You feel nice and lonely. And so, so tired. Take the beer cans out. Now, you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. They're not even really thoughts. Just assorted sensations. None of them acute enough to focus on. Imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video, a video rental. rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. Your fingers grow pale and nice. are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. What are you doing? You're not some fat fish in a fucking aquarium. Time to get moving. I was healing. As you stand, you are cold now. 
Your Double claws up. stick to your still moist skin. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, like the rest of you, Damn. it comes from a bad place somewhere. That's fine. I've got a dice that I'm picking off that'll fix it all anyway, so unlock all of the locked checks. Which is why I'm doing them. What did I want more? Volition. Tell me about cryptids, my friend. Oh, hello, dear. Of course, dear. Is there a particular most cryptid? dangerous? We agreed on just one cryptid, sweetie. Just want two more, Lana, pretty please. Can't say no to that. Well, the most dangerous cryptid is thought to have been the. Besides, I'm alone. Roma. Him's not here to tell me no. None of its victims survived. Grieving relatives never even found their bodies because the gnomes then dissolve organic tissue almost entirely. Huh. What did the script look it like? It was reportedly a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and an ungainly little thing. Quite scary to look at. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. Any photos Alas, of it? Alas, no. And the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Huh. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. That would be the giant of Kokonur. The giant of Kokonur. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Kokonur desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Need strange uh, light. Mirage or a mirage. psychogenous luminance. And just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. Is it dangerous? The towering luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a Fata Morgana, others, fate unimaginable. what makes it so peculiar a species surviving at the very limits of scientific law the giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support there are limits you see to how large a metabolism an ecosystem can beget some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes great this is great shit you need more. Gravity <laughs> anomaly. Digging it. Digging this parascientific stuff right here. Are there any invisible cryptids? What an interesting question. And the answer is yes, there are. What's that? They're called a mama d'aqua, or thin whisper of sound. And that's precisely what it seems to be. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. It's very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. Interesting. What does it sound like? Like nothing. It's such a high-pitched sound that us humans can't hear it, nor can other animals. It could be ringing right outside your window, and you wouldn't even know it. It could be anywhere. How can an animal be a many sound? Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that... It isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpuscle that emits sound waves. 
but there's no evidence to support this theory. Could it be here, right now? It could be. As I said, it could be everywhere. And we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. Maybe it's predatory. What if it's predatory? It's not. Don't worry. If it were predatory, we would have found it by the damage it inflicts. I wouldn't be so sure. What if the damage is also <laughs> invisible? What evidence is there of a sentinel being sound? Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. In the 20s, a group of aerial pagi ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, were trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing. When playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the Ea mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies, patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. Songbirds? The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding mating and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies even higher than those of the highest pitched bat calls they realized that they had discovered a new species and called it the cold de mama d'aqua after the paracanassian name for the voice of god which is said to be very silent mm -hmm. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds. Even though they couldn't see them, they could distinguish among individual birds and even began to name some of them. Name them? Sequester, Time, Joss Can. Those are but some of the Mamadakwa they followed individually. Why is the Mamadakwa so that afraid of us? is a sad story. A group of university students assisting with the field work in their enthusiasm for the project and no doubt because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors nearly drove it to extinction. extinction they tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound so they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the mamadakwas and what happens when a sound wave meets another sound wave of the same frequency, dear? Cancel each other out. Exactly. And these tests were performed so recklessly that when they happened upon the right frequency, well, they wiped out most of the population. Great regret washes over her. A wending cloth. After that, the corpuscle appears to have migrated elsewhere. There have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in Ea, but they've been few and far between. It's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable Koltamama Dakwa population anywhere. Interesting. What about what? Very educational. Of course, dear. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna put away dishes, go pee, kill time, because it's still got... Honestly, I might just head to sleep in game and pick up my dice the next day. Wait, I'll be right back.
I intentionally unmuted to yawn really loudly into it. Into the mic. I don't know why. Kind of felt like it. Um, I'm gonna actually call it when I go to sleep in game. Feels like a good stopping point, and I'm pretty tired. Uh, it's not as long of a stream as I would have liked. I actually do just really want to just... I really want to play this game. But I'm taking it very slow when I want to spend more time on it. But I'm just tired. Um, just how it is. I, uh, I also won't be streaming today or, or not today, tomorrow or Thursday because I have plans for both days. I won't be back until Friday with this. So I'm thinking of doing like a the longer stream on Friday. From the broken window and not too inviting. Yeah, yeah, go to sleep. The bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. We're gonna freeze to death the way sleep. Here we are again, my broken bard. The waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No, you have to stay. Always half aware of yourself. You're not cooperating, brother man. What? It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety, but you cannot. Because of the pain. And there's a lot of it. There's Ever a lot of it. Organs. It's like every one of them has their own nasty song to sing. Every cell in your body is moaning in agony, asking, What did we ever do to you? I'm sorry, cells, it's all me. It's my fault. Now, you're finally thinking about something other than yourself. Let's see how far that'll get you. I think I need medical attention. Oh, yes. That'll check you out. Give you some pills. Make it all okay. Wait, that's not what I meant. Don't be stupid, Harry. It's not happening. They don't make new kidneys and livers in hospital. All you've got to do is pray to God it passes and stare at the flickering darkness. You're just stuck here in the half world. Could try looking at other people, really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? I look at people all the time. I like them. Sure you do. They're all so friendly, aren't they? Yeah. Some of them are. Some of them are nice. Others are scared. Kim is nice. At least they're interesting. Each one has a process just like yours. Running in the space between their ears. And easy, Leo. secrets. People are beautiful. Statuesque. Call me Manana. tragedies of themselves. A great democracy of creatures. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness? Look at all these lights blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts! You're just pretending that you're asleep. Even to yourself. While the world goes on without you. Let it. Let it. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. I will. I will rock and I will roll. And we'll do them both at the same time. Can't stop me. Uh, 
All right. Well, it's time to save and quit. We're on day three, so we can finally open the water lock and expand the map. We can go to the village, which will probably have my badge. I can get my my pistole from Everart. Everart and uh, find the sad karaoke tape. Finally, do that. Also, find one of the pieces of armor because I think I remember someone mentioning a child running with it. The gauntlet. The helmet got kicked off in the water, and I don't think it was the, the chest piece. Uh, and then I can find the cryptozoologist. Cryptozoologist? <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. Front the Hardy Boys and all that. Yeah, there's a lot to do. Yeah, but that's it for me tonight. I am, honestly, I'm getting a lot sleepier the more I exist. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I will not be back tomorrow or Thursday. So I won't be back until Friday. But I want to do a longer stream of this on Friday because I want to actually play a lot of it. <laughs> right? Like, I feel like I've I've been missing... Not missing, but I just haven't been playing as much of it as I wish I was. Um, so I'll probably be back Friday, like, 1, 12, 12 to 1 p.m. EST. And I'll try to do, like, a 6, 7 hour stream. I, I really want to binge the game. But yeah, that's it for me tonight. I'm very sl sleepy. I was going to say sleepy and tired and said slired. But that's not a thing. But yeah, thanks for having me shut up. I appreciate it, and I hope you all have a good night. Good night.